Number 12 asks, which noble gas exhibits the weakest dispersion forces? So with the noble gases, we're talking about monoatomic species, so they certainly cannot do any kind of dipole-dipole interaction, ion-dipole, ion-ion, any of these other things, because there are no covalent bonds, right? Dipole-dipole interactions require a minimum of one bond dipole to be present, so you need covalent bonds. These do not have covalent bonds. These are all monoatomic species. Now, what is the difference between these species? As you go down the periodic table, here is helium, neon, argon, krypton. And as we go down the table, we're increasing in size because every time we go down one period, we're adding an additional shell of electrons. So we have uh, period one, period two has that second shell of electrons, three has the third shell, four has a fourth shell. So what we're talking about is we're saying helium is very tiny, neon is bigger, argon is bigger still, and then krypton is much, much bigger still. As we get larger, what does that do in terms of the strength of the dispersion forces that are possible? Well, remember that in order for dispersion to occur, we need a momentary dipole to exist, an instantaneous dipole where the electron cloud is just momentarily polarized one way or another, and then that is able to create an induced dipole in another atom. The larger that the electron cloud is, the greater that that momentary dipole is able to be, because the larger it is, the more diffuse it is, the greater ability it has to shift, and uh, shift in one direction or, or the other with respect to the nucleus. So a larger atom is able to create larger larger instantaneous and induced dipoles, so those will be stronger dispersion interactions between them. So the weakest of them all is definitely going to be helium, because that is the smallest atom, and so that is the answer for this one.